drama of events. Tonight, witness the new beat. Brought to you by Chesterfield King. Tastes great because the tobaccos are Chesterfield King. Every now and then in popular music, a new beat comes along, and suddenly it's what people want to listen to. No one has been able to explain why it is that at the same moment, in widely separated places under quite different conditions, the people who keep their ears open agree that a certain kind of music says what they want to hear. But it happens. It's happening now with a special kind of music called bossa nova. The bossa nova is not a dance like the twist, but they put dances to it. It comes from Brazil, but it is not folk music. It's not jazz either, but there's jazz in it. And like jazz, it has a vocabulary and an outlook of its own. Bossa Nova is hard to describe, but perfectly identifiable. These days, it's also practically unavoidable. Bossa Nova, from Brazil to Carnegie Hall, is the subject of tonight's eyewitness report. Your correspondent, Charles Collingwood. If you want to start a movement, you hire a hall, Carnegie Hall. The music is by a young piano player named Oscar Castro Nevis and his quartet, one of several groups sent up here by the Brazilian government to spread the word and the song. This was the official send-off for Bossa Nova, but the movement was already on its way, and it's been going all the... Bossa Nova at the White House. On stage in the East Room, Paul Winter and his sextet. They came back from a State Department tour of South America playing the new beat, and that young arbiter of American taste, Jacqueline Kennedy, gave it her cool blessing. This number, Little Boat, was the one she liked best. House or frat house, the winter sextet and bossa nova seem to have found a home in both places. Here is the Paul Winter group playing at the Phi Kappa Psi house at Lafayette College in eastern Pennsylvania. If you're really with this music, you just listen. You feel it, but you don't show it. That's the code of the music and the cult called bossa nova. And the rhythms of modern life. Out of them, they have made Bossa Nova, and they have made it a part of their lives. about this kind of music that seems to fit into a world of sports cars, hi-fi, and bikinis anywhere in the world. If you lived in Rio, you could have heard Bossa Nova coming, like correspondent Charles Corral. The Bossa Nova's been hanging around in this alley in Copacabana for a long time, a new cult waiting for some members. The tourists all walked right by on their way to the big nightclubs, where the samba reminded them that they were in Brazil, and where the twist reminded them that by jet they're only 
nine and a half hours from the Peppermint Lounge. That left this place, the Bottles Bar, to the kids, the ones with the expressionless faces and the understated way of smoking a cigarette. But nice, romantic kids, not at war with anybody, like the music in the Bottles Bar. Brazil, it's important not to betray too much emotion when listening to Bossa Nova. This samba has been cooled down and so have the listeners and the players. One of the heroes of the new wave is Antonio Carlos Jobim, who wrote Desafinado, the Bossa Nova theme song. In New York, he paid a visit to one of his heroes, progressive jazz musician Jerry Mulligan. Eyewitness reporter Philip Scheffler sat in with them as a listener. In somewhere or other, the Bossa Nova, at least the name, if not the music, has, has already made quite an impact in the United States. Do you like what you see? I do, and I don't.